Welcome back, everybody. My next guest is a stand-up comedian who also stars in Comedy Central's Corporate. Please welcome the very funny Aparna Nancherla. Thank you. It's so nice to be here. So I am on my phone too much. I don't think I am the only one, but I had a rock bottom moment with it the other day. I was walking on the street. I was deep into my phone. I thought I was about to take a sip of coffee with my other hand, but instead I just put one of my earbuds in my mouth. And I don't have a takeaway for that. I've merely been sharing it with people as a way to remain accountable uh, <laughs> to myself, to my community, and just to let you know where I'm at spiritually as well. <laughs> yeah, now iPhones have that screen time feature. It tells you how long you've been on your phone that day, how little you've lived, and... Uh, <laughs> I think social media is my main vice, though I did have a big development with Instagram. I discovered the mute button and just went wild with power. Like I turned into someone I didn't know, but I'm glad I met her. Because I tried to start out conservative. I picked out a few people and I was just like, I'll just work back up to not being threatened by her level of success, you know? <laughs> but then before I knew it, even puppies were being silenced. I was just like, ugh, they're just getting younger and younger, you know? Like it didn't. <laughs> It didn't even make sense why accounts were getting cut. And then before I knew it, I had just muted everyone. And now I just open up the app to see the no new posts sign. And I'm just like, oh, I can finally begin to heal. You know? <laughs> it's just become a national monument for me. I mainly go there to reflect. Uh, <laughs> little delay. I, uh... <laughs> I've been trying to meditate using an app off my phone, which feels like the wrong source to go to for enlightenment. <laughs> feels like asking your drug dealer, like, hey, you got any tips on getting clean? Like, it's not, <laughs> it's not what they're there for. I've been trying to use this mindfulness app, like the idea is to be present, to live in the moment. I was like, living the moment, that's a little advanced for me, so I've been living in the very recent past. <laughs> kind of like two, th two to three seconds ago is where I thrive, where I can just think about my last breath and be like, oh, you really killed it. <laughs> that, was, that was one of your best. Like, you went in, you went out. No one can deny it. Yeah, I think I've been trying to work on my brain on my own. I found out my therapist is raising her rates. Um, yes, so I guess I'm cured. <laughs> Very exciting. Thank you. Sometimes you don't realize how close you are to a breakthrough, and then there it is. <laughs> I think growth works in mysterious ways. I go to therapy for, among other things, anxiety and depression, or in millennial terms, it's like sometimes my brain is extra AF, and then... <laughs> Other times, it can't even. That's sort of the range emotionally for me. <laughs> I actually recently started a new medication. My old ones stopped working. They unionized, so I'm happy for them. But <laughs> I'm glad the new ones work, because I was turning into someone who was a bit much. Like, I was sighing a lot in public. I realize sighing is sort of the emotional equivalent of a sneeze. Like, it changes the tone of the environment you're in. It feels like it should be addressed in some way afterwards. Like, I sighed heavily recently in a crowded waiting room, and everyone just looked at me like, great, I remember death too. You know, it just felt, <laughs> felt very rude. Yeah, I live here in New York most of the time, and I do think my therapist has been trying to dump me for months. I just haven't been reading the room well. One of our last appointments, she asked if we could meet at 7 a.m. I was like, 7 a.m.? That's not a therapy appointment. That's a dare, you know? Like, I, <laughs> I, feel, I feel like if you show up, that's on you, where she's like, well, let's talk about why you're here. Like, we're outside. The building is locked. Um, <laughs> 
And the main thing you hit on at 7 a.m. is everyone is broken at 7 a.m. Like, she had as much to unpack as I did. We just kept talking over each other. It wasn't productive. And then I was in L.A. for work most of last year, and I tried to find a therapist short-term while I was out there. And mental health tip, if you need one, Psychology Today, the website for the magazine, they have a directory. You just put in your zip code. It just pulls up willing and horny therapists in your area. <laughs> just whoever's closest. They're all thirsty for your issues. And uh, <laughs> I narrowed it down to a few that appealed to me. One of them was this hypnotherapist, but he had a goatee. And I realized that's not the right facial hair to wake up to from a trance, you know? <laughs> like, that's not the kind where you're like, oh, I'm safe. Uh, <laughs> and then I found this other therapist who specialized in adults and babies. I was like, babies? I would pay just to sit in on her in a session with a baby, because how would that even go, you know? Like, would the baby just be like, ah? And the therapist is just like, yeah, object permanence. That's hard. Um, but, um, you know, it's just a phase. And then she's like, oh, you know what? We're out of time. And she just covers her face. Uh, <laughs> and speaking of which, that is my time. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. You can see her at the Amphibian Theater in Fort Worth, Texas on April 2nd through the 6th. A part of Nancherl, everybody. We'll be right back. Appreciate it. Thank you.